What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a title called Dead Knot Signal Lost. If you've never played the previous iteration of this game, it comes from a studio called Screwfly, who are very good at making incredibly immersive, very unique games. They've made a lot of titles over the year, everything from Zafau's Diaries to Dead Knot to Fear Equation, and every single one of them is a weird title that focuses on immersion over just about everything else. If you break most of their titles down to their core parts, they're pretty simple games, uh, but they put so much work into the presentation and just making the game feel very analog and very claustrophobic and very loud and very atmospheric that you kind of forget that the game is pretty simple and ultimately I don't think I've ever not enjoyed any of their games. I've sung their praises on a number of videos here on the channel and I'm very excited to have been offered their game before its release so that we could check it out. Now, the developers have told me this game is probably going to come out like in the next week. That's what they said. The 1.0 is done. They've just been quietly working on it and not really hyping it up or anything else like that. And the general premise of this game is that you are a operator. You know in Aliens, how one guy stays on the APC while all the Marines go into the facility and he's watching through their helmet cams and he's watching their EKGs and their thermal readings and everything else? The first Dead Knot was exactly that. You were an operator inside of a safe location that was equipping and managing a team that did or did not get along as those Marines went inside derelict spacecraft in order to duke it out with whatever was in there. It could be ghosts, it could be zombies, it could be poltergeists, it could be Tyranid-style bugs, and you did the best you could. But this game is more of a roguelike. Uh, so this game, you have one Marine, and you are directly controlling him, and you have like research trees and things that you can buy from the black market as you dive deep into derelicts and try to keep your guy alive. And you use the knowledge that you've pulled from previous runs, having fought the threats that exist inside of the game to memorize what they're good at. So some factions are good at shooting, some are good at stabbing, some are good at lighting you on fire, and you equip your Marine the best you can to try to counteract those threats. Today we're going to play the game for about 30 minutes. Hopefully you enjoy it. I've got a link for you down below. This game is available through a number of places in the next week, including the developer's website in case you wanted to give them all the money instead of the ludicrous splits that a lot of the platforms like Steam and Epic take. On top of that, you can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live. There's a good chance I'll be streaming this game in the near future because I'm a big fan of the previous title. I've done about two or three runs, so I vaguely know what I'm doing, but a lot of things with Screwfly games are going to be kind of unexplained. That's just the way that it goes. Uh, I've made Smith here. You can create your own Marine and you can edit them at any time for easy access. Uh, but basically your Marine is comprised of a number of different stats. You make this character kind of from scratch by applying all the points and giving him all of his perks and benefits, his loadout, depending on the suit that you take. So you pick a portrait, you pick a suit. There's everything from tech hacker suits to security combat suits uh, to suits that are like, you know, just useless, like worker suits, kind of like Isaac from uh, Dead Space. His suit is really not that great for anything. It's not fit out for anything other than protecting him from the vacuum. Uh, all of those things are here in true roguelike fashion. Uh, you've got different stats. Unfortunately, the tooltips don't really tell you what they do. If you adjust them, you can see things move on this right-hand side. But the whole thing is not exposed to the player, so quality life-wise, I would definitely recommend they expand these tooltips a little bit uh, so that either when you mouse over it, it's got a bigger box that's got an in-universe explanation of what this does colloquially, and then underneath that, in like a separate box, it actually directly tags all the skills that these affect. That would be very helpful for making an educated decision as to where you want your stats to go. I did my best. I kind of made like an even cut character who's a jack of all trades, master of none. Seems to have worked out okay for me in the past, and so we'll give it a go. Our character is equipped with a standard rifle, a pistol, a combat knife, a Kevlar armor plate, basically, and a shotgun. You can also take perks if you want. If you take a perk, you will be good at certain things, but it comes with a counter perk that makes you bad at other things. And so you can get like a perk for your character, a perk that makes you good against a certain type of enemy, but nerfs you against another one. And you can take a perk that makes you good against certain types of wrecks. So those that are exposed to the vacuum or those that have heavy security systems or those that are on planets or, you know, various things, but you'll be bad at other kinds of infiltration. For now, we'll just leave that alone. We'll save Smith, and Smith seems like a lucky guy. Let's see if we can get him to survive in the void.
So this is one of the big things that Screwfly always does in every single one of their games. They've always got these sort of critical path inspired heavy analog UIs with like buttons you have to push in order to like squelch alarms and like levers that you need to pull in order to like buff your resistances or you know shift different types of scanning around. Uh, they always have these UIs. I am always fascinated with them. This one seems a little bit simpler than a lot of their previous iterations. It doesn't seem to have quite as many moving parts. I think that's a good thing because this game is actually focused on being fast paced. The best thing that I could actually compare it to is a game like Jupiter Hell. Uh, I think this game actually has a lot in common with Jupiter Hell. It's kind of like a run and gun, blasting space zombies, blasting space bugs type of game, and it doesn't really need a heavy UI in order to accomplish that. Whereas all of their previous game were kind of simulators, so they did need that heavy UI to sort of sell you on the idea. For right now, here we are in the vacuum of space. What is a dead knot? A dead knot is basically a sanctioned space marine that goes into old ships in a universe that is in decline and tries to recover old technology from past ages so that humanity can survive another day against all of the threats that exist out in the black that have led to our decline. This is the first ship we're going to be infiltrating. There are other menus here. We've got our dead knot, so you can take a look at him and you can see how many missions he's undertaken. He does get better at dealing with certain threats the more that he's seen them. Just like a human being knows how to do things through repetitive actions, he will get better at stuff as he does them, I think. Uh, we've got our foundry over here. This is where every single thing that you discover from dead bodies to artifacts on spaceships is going to sell for a little bit of money. It's called knowledge in this game. Knowledge will allow you to buy and purchase new equipment. It will allow you to buy new upgrades that will then become available uh, through various, you know, avenues. Uh, so over here, you've got like your armor upgrades. For example, you can find thickened armor. It boosts your protection from ballistic and melee armor shards for a short duration. Uh, these are active abilities right here. They're on hotkeys. Just like World of Warcraft or anything else, you can pop them during a mission. Uh, there's also security upgrades over here. So these are largely going to be concerned with making you better at shooting guns and making things suffer when you pelt them with buckshot. And then you've got fragments over here. Uh, I think the... I don't know what most of the stuff does in the fragments tree. It seems like it gives you access to a number of different, like, traps. And I guess technological boons. And, like, sort of, like, tricks you can play on the enemy. Like, holograms and things that help you out. But, like, haven't really gotten anything from here. Most of what I've gotten has been from the common tree. Let's go ahead and take a mission, and I'll show you how this thing plays. We have three ships in front of us. We need to scan them. So this first ship on the left is a scout. It has a single deck. It looks like there are hive entities on it, so space bugs. It has very low security systems, and it has no special features. So there's nothing about this ship we need to be aware of. It's not venting atmosphere. It's not irradiated. It's not slightly on fire. You know, it's just a ship. We've got a frigate over here. That's actually a pretty large ship, so I'm guessing it's got five decks. That's a lot of decks. Uh, there are also bugs on board this ship that we will have to watch out for. Five decks is a lot, though, and one of the things you have to understand is that you're being chased in this game by... So you're being chased by these guys called the Benefactors. I don't know exactly what they are just yet in my head canon. I see them as kind of like the architects from Alien or like the Predator universe, but it says that they have like priests and soldiers and things like that, so I don't know exactly what they are, but they are definitely trying to hunt humanity and they are definitely trying to kill us. And so as we take these missions, they are chasing us, and once they catch up to us, we can't stand our ground. We have to leave. And so you can take a limited amount of ships to salvage. Bigger ships will have more stuff inside of them, but you have to be forewarned that you need to survive all five four floors of this ship to complete the mission, get out to get that treasure off the ship and back out. Uh, we've got another ship over here. It's got two floors, and it looks like there are also bugs on board this ship. I think the Explorer is probably the safest. I don't think we'll make it through the frigate. I'm just not very good at the game. Usually I survive two or three floors, but past that it gets a little bit sketchy because healing is quite rare. I'm going to transmit this to my dead knot, and we'll send Lee on in, and we'll see what happens. Our reward for taking this mission is that on our next mission, we will get increased critical chance, uh, critical strike chance, which is good. 
This one makes us highly resistant to damage on our next mission. And this one right here will boost the knowledge that we get on our next mission, which is basically money. Let's take this one. And we get this really cool immersive sort of like drop pod thing that happens. So right now we're linking on into the Dead Knot's brain so that we can be his operator. There we go. We're hardening the console connection. And we've got the neural link ready to go. And we're all ready to rock. We're initiating warp right now. Off, off, and away our dead knot goes. Now, for those of you wondering, you are able to skip this animation by hitting the escape key at any time. This is one of those things that's really cool to watch the first time. But by the time I got to my second or third ship, I was like, all right, I'm going to skip it. Uh, this right here is our AI is looking for a spot where we can breach into the actual derelict itself based on three criteria. The ADAD is the security presence that exists there, automated. Uh, integrity is how well the ship is holding together, and power is how much power is available in that area. So it's looking for the perfect cross-section between these three. Low security, high integrity, high power, basically. And there's our entrance. Okay, our space marine is drilling in. He's landed, and let's talk about the UI. So right here, this is our center display. The blue dot is Smith himself. Red dots will be enemies. White dots are points of interest. Over here on the left, we've got Smith. We've got how stressed he is, how much dread he's feeling. Uh, we've got his health. We've got the structural integrity of the current deck that we currently occupy. If that goes down to zero, the ship explodes. Things like discharging your firearm, uh, blowing up doors in order to get through them sawing through, you know, hull to get to places, that's going to lower the structural integrity. We've also got our weapons and loadouts down here. I'm going to go with the shotgun and the pistol because we have three abilities. We have the ability to enhance our armor. We have the ability to take a shot of opportunity when an enemy targets us with our pistol. And then we have a, basically an aimed shot that we can take. We also have different modifiers that are acting upon Lee right now. So it's dark. Uh, we've got secondary return fire ready to go if we weren't controlling him, but we are controlling him. Uh, we've also got combat focused and a number of other little buffs. You can control your character with W, A, S, and D to walk around the ship. Oh, okay. So we already have an issue. Uh, so effectively, you have to look out for your console. This area is saturated with EM, which is not good for us. Uh, so we need to move around it. We have a resistance to that EM field. You can see it listed right here. But if we wander into kind of like these invisible fields that are around, you'll start to notice that we get fizzle vision. Uh, that fizzle vision is going to try to exceed our resistances. And if it does exceed that resistance, it's going to blow up one of our consoles and make it kind of not work very well. This is a door right here. We have to take several turns to hack it and get through. So there we go. We've hacked through the door. Was there anything to this left side? Oh, three points of interest. I'm glad I decided to check. So we've got a dead guy, and he has a log. Settlers explored far beyond the solar system, forever pushing into the zone we call the horizon. Resources, energy, and information flowed back from the expanding horizon towards the core. Another dead guy. We found an equipment blueprint, and it is an acid injector for our weapon. We found another dead guy. And it looks like it says, checked out some of the new Covert Ops gear. It's pretty smart and sneaky. Have a high-value target in the location. Turn someone into a controlled asset. When they get near the target, they'll explode. There you go. So, talking about sort of grim technology that exists. And we found our first elevator down to the second floor. We'll probably want to explore a little bit further. We found another dead guy. You may have noticed that as we find all these points of interest, our knowledge is going up up here in the corner. That's basically just money. It's money that we've made that we now have in our bank account that we can spend if we can extract it from this location. We've got a hallway over here. Haven't seen any bugs so far. No chittering nastiness in the darkness. Ah, uh, you can hear them though in this room. Listen. Hear that? There he is! Shotgun him! He's down. All right, we killed him. Now, every single enemy in this game needs to be identified before you can take action against them. What that means is they've got a little green bar above their head. That's how much they've been scanned. If you fully scan a bug, you will know everything about it or a threat. 
and each time you scan them, your knowledge of them increases. Oh, that's not good. Uh, I guess hit him with the pistol. We missed our pistol shot. We got him with the shotgun. We need to fall back because there's another bug right there till our shotgun's cooldown is up. We dropped another bug with our shotgun. I don't know if there's more of them in here. There's something over there. We can see him. I don't know what it is, but fire at it. It's moving, and we've got lights on. Go ahead and blast. Oh, there's so many more hive in here. Everything is terrible. Uh, looks like we killed them both with one shot from the spread of our shotgun. We've got a dead body over here. Yeah, no kidding. I feel like there's going to be a lot of them around because this place is infestinated. We found a crew log, which includes a map of the current deck. Very nice. Hopefully we don't get cut off by EM fields or anything else like that on our way to look around. It looks like we need to find autopsy reports inside this ship. Go ahead and blast that thing. It's down. Shotgun took care of business. We don't have to worry about ammo or anything else like that in this game. Your guns are basically an ability that have a cooldown. And so the bigger and badder your gun is, the more of a cooldown it probably has just to balance itself. But your guns are abilities, basically. They don't need to, you don't need to worry about reloading them or anything else like that. Another space bug down. We found the engine room. Let's go ahead and take a look. We've got a dead body over here. It's worth money. Oh, we have so many bugs. Blast him. Another dead body. I think they're probably... Oh, God. Okay, okay, okay. We've been hit. We've been hit. Oh, she returned, or he returned fire, though, because of this ability right here. Good. And it doesn't look like we have a bleed right now, so that's good. Sometimes when the bugs hit you, you get a real bad bleed. We do have good resistance against the bugs because we have a melee Kevlar plate right now, like a stab vest on. So that's good. The vests come in different varieties, like ballistic, thermal, you know, melee, stab vest, stuff like that. And so we've got the right vest for the job right now. We kind of lucked out on that front. Get him with the pistol. We're being surrounded, though. That's not good. Discharging our weapon has dropped the structural integrity of the ship by about 3%. We haven't been using acid or explosive weapons, though, so we're still in decent shape. We found a storeroom. Dead body over here. This is a respawner. Uh, so if our character dies, he respawns at this station. You can also use it to refill his health. Our health appears to be mostly okay right now, though, so I don't think we need to keep pushing forward. Nothing inside of there. Those are airlocks. Once we found the autopsy report that we're looking for, we have to find an airlock inside of, like, a certain number of turns. Because I think we, like, blow up the ship and set charges behind us. I'm not totally sure on that front, but I'm pretty sure that's why we have, like, a limited number of turns to get off the ship after we find the thing we're looking for. Another bug. Drop him. Bug has been dropped. Uh, we have EM inf interference. Fall back real quick. See if we can go around it. The answer is kind of maybe. Get down the elevator. Get down the elevator. Okay, we dodged the... Oh, did it follow me down? I think it must have... Let's get that door open. Okay, door's open. Let's just clear this area so we don't blow out our console again. Found the archive. This would likely be a possible location where we might find an autopsy report, maybe. Kind of hard to say. Analytics. Also probably a place where you might find an autopsy report. Uh, we got a bug over there. Drop him. He's down. We've got two doors to play with, and we got to pick which one looks better. Very immersive. Like, the soundscape of this game is remarkably well done for pulling the player in and making you feel like, hey, I'm actually on an alien derelict right now full of unspeakable horrors that are indescribable to the viewer. And just through grit and being a badass, I've got to get through this. We found another dead body. We got another bug up. Blast him with a shotgun. I believe that that is our target. Yep. Uh, we can pick that up whenever we want to. 
So we can keep exploring the ship for more treasure if we want, now that we know where it's at. But once we pop that thing, we gotta go. Like, that's it. Like, we need to leave, like, right now. I'm gonna try to stack up a little bit more treasure because we don't have that much money right now. I'd prefer to have, like, five, six thousand by the time I get out of here so that I can actually buy something. Shotgun blast right there. There's still another one. Keep firing. He's down. Nothing inside of there. Drop that one with an auto fire. I got ahead of myself. Uh, there's no such thing as clearing behind yourself in this game. Uh, it seems to me like, having played the game for a couple of runs, it seems like the enemies constantly respawn. Now, I don't know if that's specific to species, like bugs or zombies or whatever else, but I fought zombies, I fought bugs, and I don't really want to talk about any of the other threats that I've faced because that's kind of part of the surprise and the fun of this game. It is slowly discovering all the awful things that are out there hunting humanity and trying to kill us while we're trying to steal our own knowledge back, you know? Uh, but I have dealt with three or four different threat types, and all of them seem to infinitely respawn no matter how well you clear or whatever else. So just something to keep in mind while you're plumbing the depths of these ships. Oof, all these corridors are sketchy, dude. This place is like a maze. This is actually, like, quite bad. We do have a lit room down here. There is a bio lab. We do get rewarded by our marine with trust for exploring more of the ship. So it's never a bad idea to, like, check every single room and figure out where everything's at. Okay, that links back to where we came from. That's good in case we need to take an alternate path out. Another dead body with tracking information. Tracking information is going to tell us basically where the good stuff's at. If you find tracking information on any ship, uh, it's basically going to ping where the escape vectors are. It's going to ping where your objective is. Uh, that's one of the best things you can find. And so that's good. Sometimes you find it, the game is procedural, so sometimes you find it in the first room. Sometimes you don't. We found it kind of late, so it doesn't really matter too much except for our evac, but it's still good. Get all these bulkheads open. Another archive. Hey, we found a piece of gear. Nice. Uh, it is a area sensor. Sweet. That's probably actually really helpful. So our exit is over here. Make it for an easy evac. Let me go back, and I'm going to grab the autopsy report, and then we'll probably try to evac south right here. Since we've already... Oh, dude, there's so many bugs. Blast him. Where'd that other one go? I saw two. There he is. Drop him. Is he dead? I think we already came in here, so we should be all right. Let's go grab our autopsy reports and leave. The only thing that could really go wrong is, like, a big batch of EM interference overrunning our insulation. Or we could miss about 100 million shots on that enemy right there and lose half of our health. I gotta go back up and heal or we're gonna get a bad mission rating. Oh, we're bleeding too. Beautiful. Oh no, our armor is corroded. Gotcha. So we've kind of got acid all over us. I'm gonna go back and heal. Actually, no I'm not. We're just gonna leave. I'll just take the trust hit, I think. We've explored a lot of ships, so hopefully it overrides how wounded he is when he evacs. So you're judged on a number of criteria. All right, so there's our evac. The button is live. We got to find a way out of here. Let's go. Drop that bug, please. The only good bug is a dead bug. Uh, we are also being chased by some kind of EM interference or some kind of, like, uh, malevolent force. Oh, God. Okay, console just took a little bit of a hit. 
Bugs are down. We do have acid on us, though. And we are out of here. That kind of turned on us very quickly. That was not great. We missed like six shots on that one bug, and it was just like, ugh. Uh, so he's pretty beat up. We're going to be judged on a number of criteria as to how much our dead knot trusts us. Uh, so he took a lot of damage, so that's going to hurt us. We did explore a lot of the ship, though, so that's going to help us. And then it looks like we got positive growth right there. That's fine. We got 70 positives and 60 negatives, so he's happy with us, and we want him to be happy. I don't know what long-term benefits this offers you. I've always died of things penetrating me or blasting me or melting me or lighting me on fire long before trust ever becomes a major issue. So I can't say what happens when this runs out or when it fills up because I, I've always died before the system comes into play. However, we can move on to the next system. A star system. Let's go. Oh, there's a factory here. Scan it up. Let's see what we got going on. So it is a land factory that is full of uh, reavers, actually. Raiders. Okay. And if we complete this mission, we get access to the black market to buy new things. That uh, looks like there is an ADAD security system here that we need to worry about. And it looks like the bonus for completing this mission is that it severely nerfs the ADAD on our next mission. The ADAD was that fizzle vision that we were getting. It was like tracking us, I think. I can't say for certain that's what it is, but like I think that's what it is. Uh, with our gear loadout, we definitely want to bring the area sensor with us, I think. The downside is we can't bring a pistol while we have the area scanner on us. So what I would suggest then is we keep our loadout mostly the same but we scan while we have the rifle out while we're moving through the factory and then once we actually have base contact we swap over to standard shotgun that way we can make use of the stuff that we have we also have an acid injector over here and I think that's a strong idea to play around with uh, with the previous dead knot game every life form in the galaxy has like strengths and weaknesses that are elemental basically and if you have the right element equipped for certain enemies they will drop very quickly as far as our upgrades go, we can't really do anything over here just yet, I don't think. Yeah, we need to establish a connection to the black market to get our upgrades. Alright, so we gotta do another mission then, otherwise we're not gonna pull this off. Now, what happens in this game when you die? Uh, when your Space Marine dies in this game, they've actually got a very immersive way that you join into a new game. Uh, basically what happens is your Marine dies, and it brings you to basically like this Craigslist like job website almost, and you start scanning around the galaxy for dead knots that were abandoned in the line of duty, or are missing in action, or have gone AWOL, and you get their last known location, and you travel there, and it pulls them in, and then the game just continues, but you lose everything uh, that the previous guy had extracted. And so it's very immersive. It's very interesting. What is this right here? What is going on? Are we, like, irradiated right now? A hazardous atmosphere. So we probably want to get, like, inside before too long. What is that? We're not, like, losing health or anything right now, so I think we're largely our... Oh, wow, that's a serious hack. Okay. Oh, the atmosphere vents out. Can I close the door back again? No, is the answer to that question. I went through the keys. They are fully rekey bindable, though, so that's a check of Roonies on the old boxes that I look for. But it doesn't look like we can reclose the door. Oh, the door closed behind us there. I guess it does it on its own. Either that or we were just trapped in here by some kind of automated security. Could be either or. Yeah, get that thing open. We'll go right across the street. Yep, we got Reavers! Brown coats never give up, ever. Right, let's take it nice and slow. I don't hear the sound of laughter, so I think that was the only one that was in here. Be careful about the Reavers. If they hit you even one time, it can light you on fire. And being on fire in this game is really, really bad. I know it feels like that doesn't need to be said, 
but like some games being on fire is like one damage a turn. Being on fire in this game is like 16 damage a turn and you only have 100 health. It's really bad when you get lit on fire and you, you should really go out of your way to avoid it as much as possible. First point of interest, what do we have? Uh, looks like they had the same note on there. It's kind of, let's, maybe, so just a thought. The, the notes that you pick up should get disabled as you pick them up so that you can never see them again in a playthrough. I don't know. This is a game that, like, really, really capitalizes on immersion. And being able to get the same note twice from two different locations that are wildly different, like in different star systems, kind of dispels that a little bit for me, I guess. Let's see what's inside this little nook over here. Garage 7. I don't see anything. I also don't hear anything. Well, seems to be okay so far. So this is where the power grid's hooked up, huh? Looks like we can go out through the back door, but there's no guarantee that there's going to be somewhere else. I mean, there's a building right there, I guess. I just don't want to get caught outside, like in a hazmat environment. What's uh what's beeping right now? I think it's like the atmosphere being weird, but it's hard to say. Did we get him with the shotgun? Okay, we got him with the shotgun. We're all right. Get that open and we need to just Looks like we've got EM interference coming through. That's not great. Come on. I just need to be where the interference is not. What is that? A basic station portal? It looks like it's causing crazy interference. Teleport to another portal at this location. Sure, dude. YOLO it. Why not? We're like swimming in interference right now. And it's really hard to see what's hap- Don't know what that was. That's new. We didn't lose any health or anything. So it obviously wasn't like a physical threat. But I don't know exactly what it was. Looks like this garage is mostly safe from interference, which I'm thankful for. Unfortunately, these doors keep locking behind me. Oh, we got enemy. Fire on him. Oh, nice. You killed him already. Good for you, man. Maybe I should break out my scanner. Yeah, that's pretty helpful. I don't see anything up this way. Is there a squelch I can hit? A beep is driving me nuts. Looks like we're almost at the edge of the play zone, I think. Oh, we just lost health. From what? Who knows? Oh, what is that? Yeah, I think we've been outside too long. We need to find a building or something. Ow. Why is there a spotlight on me? Oh, no, dude. Run! I think we need to be indoors right about now and not underneath the massive terrifying spotlight. I'm going to waste that reaver to make myself feel better. 
someone had to die, all right? It's the way that it goes. But yeah, this is Dead Not Lost Signal. As of right now, I don't think I've played the game enough to know whether or not I like it better than the first game. Uh, the two games are pretty wildly different from each other in terms of how they play and, like, in terms of the focus. But both games are designed to be as immersive as possible. Uh, they seem to both have an equal amount of immersion going for them and really good sound design. Uh, an interesting gameplay premise. The previous one was a real-time strategy game that had, you know, a whole bunch of equipment and RNG laced on into it. This game right here is quite different. It's actually just a standard traditional roguelike, to be honest. And so it's up to you between those two what you like better. But I will say that this fits in right among its compatriots. Like, it's not quite as, like, visually wild and crazy as something like Jupiter Hell when it comes to the spectacle of shooting things in the face and, you know, wiping out reavers and whatnot. But it does get the point across, and I think it does a lot of things that Jupiter Hell doesn't. Like, this game cultivates a lot of atmosphere. Like, this is supposed to be, like, a creeping sort of anxious experience versus the rip and tear Jupiter Hell experience. And so I think both games have like different audiences that they're targeting with what they're trying to do. I have gotten upgrades to guns. These are not all the guns that you get. There are tons of different guns in the game and like mods and things like that that you can play around with. It just, it's a randomized game. So you never know if you're going to get, you know, the laser sight or, you know, the, well, not the laser sight, but you never know if you're going to get like the advanced versions of certain guns or not on any given run. This run, we got a scanner. My last run, I got a super cool, like, uh, a, a mega badass high-tech shotgun. You know, it just kind of depends what run you're on. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day. Today up on the chopping block, we had Screwfly and their next entry, Dead Knot, Lost Signal. Tomorrow, we will have something else. Thank you for hanging out with me. That's about all I've got for you for right now, and I will catch you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Bye, folks.